know that they're involved in a secret financial manipulation and that they want it kept secret. And so I'm prepared to trade, Mr. Naftari, my silence in exchange for Winterkem. But you have Winterkem. Our contract has to be renegotiated so that if Borough National goes under, I don't lose my company to the Saudis. My silence is the only leverage I have. Forgive me, but silence about what? Some secret financial manipulation? You expect them to believe me if I use those words? Walter, you cannot pull $95 million in one chunk from a bank the size of Borough National. When I undertook to manage this plan, you agreed to do it gradually in small amounts. You're now starting to move billions in a matter of weeks. The world economic situation is deteriorating more rapidly than we had thought. We don't think we can afford to wait, Max. There will be no collapse in the foreseeable future unless you panic and start it with some damn fool move like this. And if you are wrong, what then? We wake up one morning, our oil is gone. We find that we have sold all we have in exchange for paper money that is worthless. When the Arabs learn that word of what they've been doing is out, they may panic. Move a big chunk of funds too fast or the wrong way. Really destabilize the monetary markets. Then the dollar will collapse. Whereupon there'll be a lot of jawboning by the president, and that won't work. Then they'll go to selling gold, and that won't work either. Then they'll have to go to capital controls, freeze foreign assets, stop any money from going in or out, and that will be the end of all the markets. That'll really be the finish. Then you'll see a worldwide depression that'll make the 1930s look like a kindergarten. In two months, you'll have bread lines in Detroit, riots in Pittsburgh. In six months, you'll see grass right over Rodeo Drive and Michigan Boulevard and Fifth Avenue. And I won't have done it, Hub. You will. All because you tried to stop a movement that couldn't be stopped anyway. Listen to me, Hub. Money, capital, has a life of its own. It's a force of nature, like gravity, like the oceans. It flows where it wants to flow. This whole thing with the Arabs and gold is inevitable. We're just going with the tide. The only question is whether you want to let it go like an unguided missile and raise hell, or whether you want to keep it in the hands of responsible people, keep it channeled, keep it quiet. Believe me, Hub, the dollar will hold. Believe me. The system will be fine, providing nobody panics. It began eight days ago when a group of Arab investors withdrew billions of dollars from U.S. banks. That, in turn, started a chain reaction on the world money markets. Dollars, pounds, marks, francs, yen. Not one currency escaped. This scene outside a Manhattan bank was duplicated all over the world as people saw their life savings become worthless in a matter of hours. Good evening, I'm George Page in New York, and this is another in our series of reports on the world economic crisis. The growing paralysis of the industrial world has left millions without jobs, without money, and without hope. Crowds of unemployed poured into Washington yesterday. They stood in silent protest before the nation's leaders. At the same time, more than a million people packed St. Peter's Square, where the Pope urged calm and nonviolence. The pontiff asked for prayers for world leaders, prayers and peace and reason. But the last 24 hours have been marked by growing protests and ever-increasing violence. Last night, demonstrators burned American currency in front of the White House, and attempts to put out the fires led to a confrontation with police. Every hour, from every corner of the globe, there are new reports of outraged crowds demanding action. A bankrupt world seems to be teetering on the very edge of anarchy.
And now for continued coverage from around the world. A statement was issued from the OPEC meeting today that the leading oil producing nations would resume oil exports as soon as the international monetary markets have stabilized. The panic has spread across political and philosophical boundaries. The USSR and the developed Eastern European communist countries dependent on Western trade and capital have witnessed the same riots that have taken place in the West. The economic summit conference tomorrow will be attended by leaders of the West, the East and the Third World. Said one, there is a need for a unity of purpose and resolve unequaled since the end of World War II. At this time of crisis, there has been a turning to the past as well as the future. Words spoken by President Franklin D. Roosevelt in the depths of the Depression were quoted in the Senate today. This is preeminently the time to speak the truth, frankly and boldly. Nor need we shrink from honestly facing conditions in our country today. This great nation will endure as it has endured, will revive and will prosper. We face our common difficulties. They concern, thank God, only material things. Each age is a dream that is dying, or one that is coming to birth.